He's campaigned in Michigan for eight years. I campaigned in two days and got 30 percent. There is a movement here. And if you see, this is not an angry crowd. This is a patriotic crowd. This is a crowd that wants an America their kids can be proud of. Nikki Haley, she is there pushing back against the notion that the Republican Party is 100 percent MAGA ahead of Super Tuesday. And she is also warning that Donald Trump can't count on all Republicans to back him in the general election. Let's discuss. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. Good morning, Congressman. It's good to have you at the table with us. Uh, hey, y'all. Good to see you. I, I want to. I want to. Before I get, we get into the the politics of of you know the parties. I, I want to broad broad stroke look at uh, some polling that uh, talks about the economy. New York Times poll on the economy uh, with Siena College notes asking the question, thinking about the nation's economy, how would you rate economic conditions today? You've got excellent, good, twenty six percent of Americans, fair to poor. 74% of Americans. How are Democrats getting this messaging on the economy so wrong for voters that they think with low, un un uh, low unemployment, low inflation, job uh, creation up, uh, a growing, expanding economy, their, their 401ks are a damn sight better than they were not just a year ago, but six months ago. What is wrong here? What is the disconnect that people think that Joe Biden is, pre is presiding over the worst economy in a decade? Our economy is a comeback. Our economy is a comeback story. We've got to start telling that story, Michael. And it, it, Democrats, I, I think, when, when it comes to messaging, we're at our worst when we try and you know speak to the head and we try and get all cerebral and we talk about the numbers and you know unemployment numbers and GDP growth. That doesn't mean anything, uh, especially, you know, to uh, wage workers who may not have seen that 24 percent growth last year in the stock market. They want you to talk to the heart uh, and to the gut. And, and they're looking at a, a phrase that I hear all the time uh, from friends and family, which is breathing room. They want breathing room mm -hmm. in their finances. They want to know that, you know, they're going to be able to save uh, a little bit in case, you know, they get a blown tire or. Uh, you know, the washing machine goes out or maybe they want to, you know, take the kids uh, to Disneyland. You know, they want to know that they're going to have breathing room in their finances. And so I think we need to speak, you know, a little more plainly about it. And, and we need to connect how our policies, uh, you know, at the top line of low unemployment, of seeing inflation flattening out, how that connects to breathing room uh, in your finances. And then the president, frankly, just needs to be out there more across America. He's at his best. Uh, when he's with blue collar, uh, regular Americans talking about how his policies connect. I mean, you, you, there was like a, a little silence. Everybody's like, yes, <laughs> this just makes so much sense. Why is this so sensible, Congressman? You just, you made it so plain. Why is it, why are people making it so complicated? Hard, right? Why are they yeah, so but complicated? It, is, it is, it is literally just as simple as you, as, as you said and you noted. I mean, we, we started this segment obviously coming in with sound from Nikki Haley. I am wondering just, you know, your thoughts about uh, the former governor of South Carolina being in this race, this argument that she is now making about uh, Donald Trump. She keeps towing up to the line, but not going over it. I, I know uh, Governor Newsom of California said that Nikki Haley is uh, one of the best surrogates for Democrats right now this cycle. Well, what do you think about that? Well, I would rather be us uh, than Donald Trump right now, because I'm hearing about the concerns about, you know, uncommitted voters in Michigan. And the president has work to do there, certainly. But when you look that in Michigan, 10 different counties voted for at least 30 percent or more for Nikki Haley, and that across the board in these primaries, 20 percent of Republican voters are saying they're never going to vote for Donald Trump. You know, that's a hell of a math problem uh, for Donald Trump, especially when you look at back in 2020, it was only about 5 percent of Republican voters who were saying they were never going to vote for Donald Trump. So he's got a, a real math problem here. He's got a ceiling that keeps coming down uh, every week when he shows us and reminds us uh, as to who he is. And, and every day that Nikki Haley stays in this race, uh, it shows Joe Biden who are the voters that are gettable uh, for him and, and the campaign. Here, here's the thing, Congressman, which is some of this is playing out 
on the presidential campaign trail. And some of this is playing out in the House of Representatives itself. This is from the Washington Post on Wednesday talking about Speaker Johnson and the House GOP. Quote, the lack of unity among House Republicans, whose first year in the majority was defined by their inability to agree on must-address issues, has weakened Johnson's hand as he negotiates without a cohesive message on conservative demand. So yes, that impacts the Republican caucus. They can't get their act together, but it also impacts the the general body, right? Your ability to actually get things done narrowly averted a government shutdown this week. There's another one on the horizon and one more after that. We spoke with your colleague, Congressman Meeks, just yesterday. He said, I don't think this Friday's deadline is the one to worry about. I think it is the one after that. And so my question to you, the, the, the chaos in their caucus, how much is it costing the American people? The cost of the chaos is that we can't plan anything long term. So we can't put our best scientists to work to cure cancer to help you and your family in a long term way because we budget them week to week. We can't put, you know, the uh, TSA workers who protect our airports uh, and give them any certainty so that the lines are shorter when you want to take that family vacation or, or go see your relatives because we're budgeting them week to week. And so we're feeling this across the government. Uh, because of the chaos. And I think this is where Democrats have to show uh, that government is at its best uh, when its leaders govern. And it's at its worst when they just want to rule. And Republicans have an interest in just ruling, ruling over your freedoms and, and restricting them. And Democrats have an interest in, in governing. And I think the story that we have to tell uh, that really hits with folks is that I-95 about a year ago collapsed uh, just outside Philadelphia. And most experts said it was going to take a year to get that critical portion uh, of the freeway back up and running. And it was causing uh, an extra half hour to an hour delay in people's commutes. That got fixed in about two weeks uh, because of a Democratic administration and a Democratic governor who wanted to get things done. And so I think we have to, again, just tell that story. We want to govern. We want to get things done. And these guys are only interested in the chaos because all they want to do is rule over you. Congressman, I, I want to shift to something a little bit close to home and, and certainly close to your heart, the upcoming uh, California U.S. Senate race. Uh, you have a situation now where Steve Garvey, the Republican candidate, uh, is basically in a statistical tie for first place with Adam Schiff. Um, give us your assessment of the race there at this moment. Uh, is this boiled down to a Schiff-Garvey uh, uh, you know, race in the fall coming out of this jungle primary? Uh, yes, and, and, and I'm on team shift uh, because I've been in the breach with him in these fights for our democracy, and I've seen the dollars he's delivered for California. Uh, I, and I have a lot of respect to Katie Porter and Barbara Lee, but it, it does look like it is going uh, this way. And, and, and frankly, if that is the case, um, if it's Adam uh, and, and Garvey in, you know, in the general in California, the great news is, is that uh, Democratic donors and activists will be able to spread their resources to Arizona to help Ruben Gallego or to Ohio to help Sherrod Brown or to Montana to help uh, John Tester. You know, there's other critical Senate races uh, where resources are going into California right now. So with one Democrat coming out, uh, that's going to be a, a real boost to some of the other seats we need to protect. All right, Congressman, stick around with us, because after the break, we want to, you know, have you put on your House Judiciary Committee hat and talk to us about the legal lifeline, the Supreme Court. <laughs>